Influences, Alvin Aguilar. Oh, it gets me out of bed. It's just, you know, a lot of things to do. There's so much to accomplish. And I just love, love doing what I'm doing. <laughs> any, any rituals to get you started? Uh, nothing in particular. As soon as I get up, my day starts right away. I'm making phone calls, taking care of business, taking care of what you have to do. Um, making sure everybody's there in the gym, making sure everybody's doing what they have to do. So that's basically it. <laughs> Well, everything happened by accident. Um, like I said, when I was nine years old, um, I watched one of those ninja films and I wanted to become a ninja. And then after that, I just kept learning and learning. And uh, when I'd get an instructorship in the martial art, I'd keep learning some more. And I, I knew that there was no such thing as a complete martial art. You'd have to keep learning more and more and more. So that's what I did. And, uh, you know, as we went through the years, it just so happened that, you know, uh, I, I loved I loved what I was doing and I kept on and basically made a career out of everything. And uh, it was just all by accident actually. I was just doing what I wanted to do and then I just fell into this. <laughs> okay, so there's no one particular person who influenced you? Um, well, the, the instance, well, there's a lot of instances that made me want to train and uh, do jujitsu even more. I booked a private lesson. I booked a private lesson hopefully so I'd be able to show Hoist what kind of a good fighter I was. And then what happened was, when I got to the private lesson, it was only a purple belt. I was like, wow, why is it only a purple belt? I don't want to learn from this guy, he's only a purple belt. So what I did was, since I said, you know, so I was really a young punk at that time, so I said, hey, um, why don't we just spar instead? So we sparred, in less than one minute, I got my ass kicked, stapping right away. I said, oh, maybe just because I'm jet lagged, oh, let's go again, let's go again. We went something like 10 times and he kicked my ass like 10, 10 different times in 10 different ways. And that's where I felt, you know, the power of jiu-jitsu and how awesome it was. And I said, I have to really, really, you know, train into this and understand everything. So that was one of my, you know, moments that I wanted to, you know, dedicate myself to jiu-jitsu. But um, even before that, I dedicated myself to so many martial arts, uh, Sarian for the street fighting, uh, weaponry, Carlos Hermanos, Ilustrisimo, Pequiti Tercia, you know, for the weapon and stick fighting. You know, I really dedicated myself to, you know, everything in, everything in martial arts. <laughs> As we were martial artists here in the Philippines, there was, no, there was no place to showcase your skills. What happened was, you know, a boxer could never join a Taekwondo tournament because you wouldn't be able to punch. And the same thing for a Taekwondo guy, wouldn't be able to join a boxing tournament because you wouldn't be able to kick. So people would, what we would do, we would schedule these underground fights. So we'd have these underground fights. And then sometimes when someone would lose, you know, the other side would you know, try to make Bawi in different ways to try to get back at you. And then sometimes that would escalate and escalate, would escalate to sticks, knives, guns, people would get shot, people would die. So we had to make sure that, you know, we sanitized all of this. So a lot of people tested me and I always had to kick their ass or break their, you know, bones here and there. But um, it was a process I think all of us had to go through. And uh, there was a lot of bad stuff that we had to go through to, to make sure that would happen. Court cases, people getting hurt, people going back and forth. But then we were able to clean it up. Um, when we started the URCC, we expected 500 people to show up, 5,000 people showed up, and then the rest is history. We're the first in Southeast Asia, Asia's longest running MMA promotion, and we, you know, we keep going until now. Um, his mind and his heart. Okay? Like I always tell my students, your only limitation is your mind. So we have a thing that we call a 3%er and 97%er that was taught to us years ago. A 3%er and a 97%er. So we a 3%er and a 97%er. So we basically tell everybody, 97% of everybody you see are losers. 97%ers are always complaining, oh, I'm not rich because my dad didn't take care of me. I'm not rich because I was born to a poor family. I'm not good because I didn't have enough money to train. They always have a reason why they're not there. They're not anywhere. 3%ers always take responsibility for what they, you know, for what happens to them. I lost because I made a mistake. But you know, they're not afraid to make mistakes. They know making mistakes is part of the process. So. Three percenters are always striving, always you know going the extra extra mile. The three percenters are like you know are the ones that become champions. If you notice, if you look at if you look at training sessions, there's going to be so many, but only one percent of those people can become world champions. And those are the people you have to surround yourself with. That's what makes a champion. That's what makes a champion. Oh, as a father, you know. 
unexpectedly when, when I took on a lot of students, ever since I was 17, I was already teaching martial arts. You know, when you teach somebody, you mentor them, you want them to become as good as possible. Then as you're mentoring them and teaching them, you see all these problems that they go through, all these, you know, life, life changes, life challenges that they go through. And then of course, you're just helping them and supporting them because you want to do them to be the best, right? As it goes on, you know, I've had like more than a thousand kids already. So many went through me, so many, so many champions, so many students. I've taught so many people. You know, we've created the most champions in Asia for you know, Jiu-Jitsu and MMA combined. Now it's wrestling and there's so many. Now, because of that, I was much more prepared to deal with my kids because I have my first three were all boys. So my first three boys would always come up with their own challenges. And every time they, you know, they, something would happen, it's like I wasn't even surprised. And they wouldn't do anything out of the ordinary, which is, you know, I'm very fortunate for. And then now, what really upended me is I have a little daughter now. She's two years old. She's the one that bullies me all the time. She gets her way with me. Even when she was, she was just a year old, she would always, you know, she's my boss. <laughs> no, even if they wanted to, I'd discourage it. I teach them combat sports to prepare them for all the other challenges in life not just the self-defense aspect, I'm teaching them about discipline, uh, commitment, hard work, dealing with failure. That's what I want them to, you know, these are, the, these are the qualities I want them to develop early on in life. So regardless of what they want to do, you know, they're prepared for it. Now, if they want to go until as far as the Olympics for wrestling and stuff, that's fine. But to do it as a job, I, I'll tell them no, because there's so much other things that we have to do. Um, not that I'm saying, you know, being a professional fighter is, you know, is, is bad or anything like that. I mean. It's also a beautiful career. You can make millions and millions of dollars. It's just that, you know, that's something that you'll have to completely cut off everything. And that's a hit or miss thing if you want to be there. It's a hit or miss thing. It's either you're really, 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 really good or you're just average and average will never cut it. I'm a father who always wants to be around his kids. I want my kids always with me. I always want to train with them. I feel fortunate that I get to train with them every day. We get to hang out every day. We get to basically do what we want every day. Um, I feel very, very fortunate in that regard. My, my three boys always take care of their younger sister. Of course, my boys are always fighting every day. It's like a daily thing. They're always beating each other up for, for some stupid reason. The boys will be boys as always, especially Luki and Lucha because they're both closer in age. But uh, you know, I couldn't ask for better children. I guess, you know, regardless of, of where you are, as long as it's someone you care for, someone you take care of, you know, it doesn't matter. You take care of them right away. You, you go in. Like uh, one of our idols, like Henzo Gracie said, a friend is someone who comes in with a flying kick. Uh, we choked him out and then put him there. As soon as he woke up, he started another fight. He started, you know, kicking and hurting people. And he was very, very lucky because the guys in Baguio were literally going to chop his head off. They didn't even want him to be in Baguio. So when we came outside, there were several guys. It's a true, true story. They said, we're from this tribe and we're a headhunting tribe. We're gonna take his head off because he made this guy bust us. I was like, oh, wow, really? Can you not do this in URCC? How would that look, right? So we, some guy got his head, gets his head lopped off in the URCC. I mean, only in some cases. When people betray people who have been with them, who have supported them their whole lives, and you betray the people, you betray the hand that feeds you, those people never, should never have a second chance. Those are, the, those are the type of people who are like the scum of the earth for me. The second type of scum of the earth for me are the people who, who, who rape little children, you know, molest little children. These people should have no second chance. Oh, it was just tempted. No, there's no tempting for you. You gotta go. So aside from that, everything's good. Okay, what sets us apart, especially in Southeast Asia, is we're the first, okay? Because we, we did this in the 90s, uh, well, the 90s we were already doing this, but we had our first event in 2002, but we're still, you know, years ahead of everybody in Southeast Asia. Now, the reason why our Filipinos have not broken through in the world stage yet is because a lot of our fighters get big heads right away, okay? So they beat a few guys and they think they're the next big thing, it doesn't work that way. You, when you start believing your own legend, that's when you start going down. You always have to be hungry. 
A lot of these people, they win one, they, once, twice, they, they hear the fans saying, ang galing mo, ang galing mo. They wake up the next day, ang galing ko. Oh, wow, that's when you start going down. I had this guy, this, this fighter. This kid, when he was nine years old, he would win wrestling, boxing, jiu-jitsu, and he was doing so, so, so well. Until he became a URCC champion. But by that time he became a URCC champion, he only had about five or six fights. The UFC called, tells him, we're gonna get you right away. I told him, you're not prepared. Don't go for it. You're not prepared. And he goes, no, but uh, this is my chance. I'll never get another chance. That's what you think. If you go in there right now and you're not prepared, and you get kicked out, you'll never go back there. And true enough, he went there unprepared. He took the advice of you know his managers who had, and then now this kid is nowhere to be found. I mean, he's, he's nothing, he's not in the fight game. You know, he fights in rinky-dink promotions. It's in really, really terrible. And I really hope that, you know, that doesn't happen to any more fighters. But like I said earlier, your only limitation is your mind. Uh, Making mistakes is always part of the process. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just keep going and going. Uh, don't listen to other people. If that's your dream, go for it. Don't listen to other people, your family, your friends. You know, a lot of people would always say, you know what, all the fighting stuff you do, Alvin, that's never gonna get you anywhere. You'll probably end up in jail or dead or, or head of a mafia or whatever. I didn't. I'm a family man right now. I have a promotion. I have a business. We have the largest team in Asia right now. and. Uh, we're, we're gonna keep going bigger and we've helped so many people and you know we're gonna continue to help people and change people's lives so I'm very very proud of that so if you have a dream and no matter how bad it seems no matter how bad it seems to the point that you want to kill yourself just keep going suck it up it's part of the process Okay, so we have a segment in this um, in this series where we show you three random photos from Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna show them to you now and just tell us, you know, a one-liner or anything about it. Okay. Okay. So this is the first photo. Okay. Okay. Uh, that me and my daughter, we were in a cat store, and then she didn't want to hang out with the cats anymore, so they decided to hang out with me. <laughs> okay. So the second photo is this. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that was Halloween. Uh, my girlfriend uh, May loves Johnny Depp, so you know we decided to try it out. So she'd stop fanning over him and start fanning over me. <laughs> of, of course, of course. <laughs> okay, photo. That's why we have my daughter. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, yeah, I'm a big Star Wars fan also as well and I'd always wanted to be involved with Star Wars. And I said, oh, this is my chance. I'm gonna get a picture and see what it looks like. So hopefully, be, you know, being able to play Han Solo for like a few seconds. That was in MOA. <laughs> I'm a student for life, so I'm always learning. I'm always getting new things. Uh, we have a lot of new projects this year, but uh, my, one of my goals this year is to make the Philippines a world power in wrestling as well. You know, it's about time that we have a sport that, you know, anybody in the street can do. It's not, you know, I love basketball, but basketball doesn't love us. You know, we're just not, you know, tall enough. Uh, but wrestling, we have the heart, and all we need is the exposure because we already have the skill. And by then, we'll have a lot of Olympic champions. <laughs>